So thank you for joining for our 90 minute 26 and two yoga class. It is lovely to be here with all of you. Um, today's yoga class will start with a question that you can just silently answer for yourself. So before we begin, before we begin, you know, moving our body, just take a moment with your arms down by your sides. And the question for this morning is how is your heart today? How is your heart today? And let that inform your practice and know that like um, we embody our emotions. So I actually think like if you're a little sad this morning, like I am about RBG, um, it's really important that we move because otherwise those emotions get stuck in our physical body. And like, that's what we feel when like the back bends are hard, but just give yourself a little bit of grace this morning if you're a little bit sad like I am. So we're gonna start with um, five rounds of sun salutations. You're gonna come towards the top of your mat. I'm gonna come towards the back of my mat so you can still see me. And I'm gonna show you in periphery. So for sun salutations, um, they move with the breath. So every movement has an inhale or an exhale. And the breathing that we're using helps to generate heat. It's called ujjayi breathing. It's actually similar to pranayama, but just through the nose. So you gently constrict your throat so you breathe a little slower and a little longer, and that'll help to generate heat as well as moving the body itself. So starting feet close together towards the top of your mat, take a moment, rock the weight into your toes, bring the weight back into your heels, and then just firmly plant yourself, evenly distribute your body weight on both feet, arrive in the present moment. Okay, Surya Namaskar A, sun salutations. Bring your hands together at heart center. As you inhale, lift your arms up overhead, looking up towards the ceiling as if you are saluting or greeting the sun. As you exhale, suck your stomach in, bend your knees, fold forward, put your hands on the floor, drop your head down. Inhale, halfway lift. You can have your, hand, uh, your hands on your thighs, your shins, or the floor in front of you. You want weight in your toes, hips over heels, chin away from your chest, back flat. As you exhale, bend your knees, put your hands on the floor, and step back into a high plank. And if high plank doesn't work for you, you're welcome to come down onto your knees. From here, we'll do what's called the chaturanga. So go forward two inches, so elbows over wrists, and then hug your elbows in, lower down halfway. Inhale, come up into a back bend. You can do baby cobra with thighs on the floor or elbows bent or up dog with arms straight and thighs off the floor. As you exhale, tuck your toes under, lift your hips up for down dog. Press your heels down, spread your shoulders wide. Um, if down dog doesn't feel good for you, no problem. Take an alternative, do child's pose instead. So every high plank can be done on the knees. Every down dog can be done on the knees, child's pose. And the other thing to keep in mind, that vinyasa where you bend the elbows down and come up into up dog, you can skip that too. You can go right from your plank into your down dog and hold here. Take an inhale, ujjayi breathing. Take an exhale, slow. Good, on your next inhale, look forward. Step forward, feet between your hands. As you exhale, bend your knees a little bit more and drop your head. Inhale, reach to rise, come up, arms of your ears, looking up overhead. Exhale, bring your hands back down at heart center. Good, second set, inhale, lift your arms up, looking up, hello sun. Exhale, bend your knees, fold forward, drop your head. Inhale, halfway lift, weight in your toes, back flat. Exhale, bend your knees, put your hands on the floor, step back into your high plank or tabletop. Remember that you can skip the vinyasa by going straight to down dog or child's pose. Otherwise, on your next exhale, lean forward, bend your elbows lower down. Inhale, come up into your up dog or baby cobra. Exhale, tuck your toes under, lift your hips up, down dog or child's pose. Spread your fingers wide. Read down through all 28 knuckles, especially the space between your index finger and thumb, push down there. Lift your hips, contract your thighs, drop your head. Take a slow inhale, slow exhale. Good. On your next inhale, look forward, step forward. Exhale, drop your head, soften your knees. Inhale, reach your eyes, come up, arms with your ears, looking up, hello sun. Exhale, hands back down at heart center. 
Good, third one, getting a little faster. Inhale, lift your arms up, looking up overhead. Exhale, bend your knees, fold forward, drop your head. Inhale, halfway lift, hips over heels. Exhale, bend your knees, step back into your high plank. Keep exhaling, roll forward, lower down, chaturanga. Inhale, come up into your up dog or baby cobra. Exhale, tuck your toes under, lift your hips up, down dog or child's pose. Try to press your heels down. Draw the shoulders back and down, away from your ears, down your ribs. That's the hard part for me. Relax your head. Look towards your shins or thighs. Try to get your heels on the floor. Take an inhale, push the floor away from you. Take an exhale. Inhale, chin away from your chest. Look forward, step forward. Exhale, drop your head. Inhale, reach your eyes, come up, looking up overhead, arms with your ears. Exhale, hands back down at heart center. Good, two more. Inhale, lift your arms up, look up. Exhale, bend your knees, fold forward. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, put your hands on the floor, step back. Keep exhaling, lower down, chaturanga. Inhale, come up into your up dog. Exhale, tuck your toes under, lift your hips up, down dog. Try to get your heels down. You might want to separate your feet a little bit more. Contract your quadricep muscles. Feel the hamstring stretch. Lift your hips up. On your next inhale, look forward, step forward. Exhale, drop your head. Inhale, come up, arms with your ears looking up. Exhale, hands down. Good, last one. Inhale, arms up, look up. Exhale, stomach in, fold forward. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, bend your knees, put your hands on the floor, step back, keep exhaling, lower down. Inhale, come up into your back bend. Exhale, tuck your toes under, lift your hips up. Down dog. Drop your head, maybe towards the floor. Spread your shoulders wide. Push your knuckles down. Lift your hips up, heels down. Look between your hands, chin away from your chest, step forward. Exhale, drop your head. Inhale, reach your eyes, come up, looking up. Exhale, hands down. Good, wonderful, okay. So from here we hop into the traditional 26 and two. Hopefully you feel a little bit more warm, I do. So we're gonna start with pranayama, deep breathing, good for your lungs and respiratory system. Bring your feet together, toes, heels touching nicely. Interlock your 10 fingers, cross your thumbs, glue your knuckles underneath your chin. Knuckles stay under your chin like glue. Rock your weight into your heels. Relax your shoulders down away from your ears. You made it to class. Concentrate, meditate, and begin. Inhale, chin down and arms up. Breathe in through your nose. Lift your elbows up. Suck your stomach in. Fill up your lungs. Exhale, head up. Exhale through your mouth, H-A. Sound head back. Arms forward, elbows touch. Good, inhale. Chin down, slowly bring your chin down. Look straight ahead, lift your elbows all the way up, fill up your lungs. Exhale, head up, slowly push your head back. Look way, way, way back for the wall behind you, elbows touching away from your body. Inhale, head down, breathe in through your nose, down through your throat to the very bottom of your lungs. Exhale, head up as you exhale, open your mouth wide, make an HA sound like you're trying to fog up in here on the ceiling. Inhale, head down. Every you inhale, you want to take in more air than the last breath to expand your lung capacity. Exhale, head up. The more you exhale here, the more fresh oxygen you can take in. On your next breath, push the air out. Inhale, head down. So make this the deepest breath so far. Breathing into the top of the lungs, middle of the lungs, bottom of the lungs, full lungs. Exhale, head up. In our day-to-day -day life, we don't really use the full lung capacity but the lungs need to be worked out like any other part of the body. Inhale, head down. So it's that same ujjayi breathing. The throat is gently constricted so you can breathe slower and longer. Exhale, head up. Think of it like an ocean sound. <sighs> slowly head back, slowly arms forward, elbows touch. Inhale, head down. Keep the weight in your heels. Squeeze your thighs, squeeze your butt, lock your legs. Exhale, head up. Weight stays in your heels. Hips a little forward, hip muscles contracting, thigh muscles tight. Inhale, head down. Suck your stomach in, depression to abdominal wall, contraction to abdominal muscles. Exhale, head up, suck it in, hold it in tight, draw your belly button towards your spine. Elbows forward, elbows touch. Good, inhale, chin down. Last breath in the first set, spine a little longer, elbows a little higher, lungs a little fuller. Suck your stomach in, breathe deep, full lungs. Exhale, head up, take your time, 
Eyes open, hips forward, legs locked, stomach in, keep exhaling, push, squeeze, elbows touch. Good, change, arms down, you can roll out your shoulders and head. Okay, second set, feet together. Interlock your 10 fingers, cross your thumbs and glue your knuckles under your chin. Squeeze your thighs, squeeze your butt, grow taller out of the base of your spine and begin, inhale, chin down and arms up, breathing in through the nose, against the back of the throat, create a little bit of a vibration, snoring sensation. Exhale, head up, so use your throat muscles. Think of your throat like a valve, constricted, breathe slower, longer, exhale more, elbows touch. Inhale, chin down. Exhale, head up. Inhale, head down for one, two, three, four, five, six, full lungs. Exhale, head up, six, five, four, three, two, lungs empty, one. Inhale, chin down for one, two, three, four, five, six, hold at the top. Exhale, head up, six, five. Four, three, two, elbows touch, one. Inhale, head down. So you wanna move slow with control. And when your lungs are full, when your elbows find their highest point, hold for just a moment. Exhale, head up. So there's always a pause between the inhale and exhale, savoring every breath and the space between. Inhale, head down. Try to keep your elbows lifted the whole time. So chin down, elbows up, full lungs. Exhale, head up. So sweep your arms forward. Imagine you're in water up to your shoulders and you don't want to dip your elbows into the water. Good. So as you inhale, just bring your elbows out and your chin down so the elbows lift up without, without dropping below heart level. Exhale, head up. There's an exception to this though. If you're having neck pain and you can't drop your head back, keep your elbows low, no problem. Inhale, head down, slowly bring the chin down so you're never forcing your body, never contorting or moving in a way that doesn't feel good for you. Exhale, head up, slowly push your head back, never force the neck, squeeze your palms together, wrists together, forearms, elbows touch. Inhale, head down, last breath. Second set, deepest breath of your life when your lungs are totally full, surprise yourself, take in one more sip of air. Exhale, head up. Let everything go through the exhale breath. Any worries, any cares, let them go. Be here now, elbows touch. Good, change, arms down, curl out your shoulders and head. Let's continue, half moon of hands to feet pose, Ardha Chandrasana with Padastasana. Feet together, inhale, arms overhead, palms together. It's a little hard to see, but interlock your fingers, release your index fingers, cross your thumbs, nice tight grip, don't lose the grip. Stretch up out of your waist and bend, right and left, right and left. Every time you pass through the middle, reach up a little taller. Good. And when you can't stretch anymore, come to stop in the middle. Bring the weight into your heels. Push your hips a little forward so the hips and pelvis open forward. Upper body back. Throughout the posture, you want your hips and shoulders facing the front of your mat, never twisting or collapsing. Root down through your heels. Inhale, stretch up out of your waist. Try to touch the ceiling. Exhale, breathing absolutely straight line. Slowly bend your body to the right without bending your elbows and knees. Continuously push your hips to the left beyond your flexibility. You're trying to create a tremendous stretching feeling in the left side of your body, all over, inside out, bones to skin, fingers to toes. Just remember, it's the first posture of the day and there's no rush. Know where you have to be. Nothing you have to prove to yourself or to anyone else. All you have to do is breathe in and out through the nose. That's a wonderful gift that you've given yourself and no one can take it away from you. Always make your breath your number one priority. Probably a good idea when you leave the room too. Lock your arms, lock your legs, and if it feels good, let your breath help you get a little deeper. As you inhale, lengthen your arms. As you exhale, come down, push, push, push. Good, change, inhale to come up and stop in the middle. Push your hips forward, arms back with your ears, stretch up out of your waist and slowly bend to the left as you push your hips to the right. Come down in a straight line. So no bend in the elbows, no bend in the knees, just push your hips to the right beyond your flexibility, creating a stretching feeling in the right side body, but don't collapse. Lift your chin, 
lift your chest. It's a very proud posture and you have a lot to be proud of for practicing yoga this morning. Good for you. Bring the weight into your heels. Push your hips a little forward, upper body back. Right hip tilts forward, two hips in line. Now bring your left shoulder forward, open your chest like a flower petal blooming. Come down, push and push and push. Good, change, inhale to come up. First back bend of the day. Take a deep breath, full lungs, keep your eyes open and relax your head all the way back. Look for the floor behind you. This one's a little bit hard for me to talk into at once. Keep your eyes open, look for the floor behind you and then bring your arms back with your ears. Try to touch the wall behind you. Good, so full spine back bending from coccyx to the neck looks good. Lower back, middle back, upper back, bend your total spine. Backward bending, try to fall down backwards. Maximum weight in your heels. Inhale, breathing, push stomach, thighs, hips, everything forward and bring your arms back. Look back, fall back, way back, go back, more back. Change, wonderful. Inhale to come up, stretch out first. Exhale, bend your knees, carefully go down with a flat back. Put your hands on the floor, then relax your head and go for a walk, move your hips, shake your head. This is a U-turn from back bending to forward folding. At the beginning of class, your spine might not be quite warmed up yet. Move your hips to get your lower back nice, relaxed, comfortable, easy, flexible. Hopefully the sun salutations make the body a little bit more warmed up at this point, but it's still worth noting at the top of class, especially in the morning and morning classes, like we're a little stiff, or at least I am. Okay, hands to feet pose, padasasana. Bend your knees halfway. At first, grab the backs of your calves, your Achilles, or your heels from underneath. Feelers choice. Bend your elbows back, touch stomach to thighs, chest and knees, drop your head, eventually touch your face to your shins below your knees. No room for light and air between the upper and lower body. Pull on your heels, roll your weight forward into your toes and lift your hips up. Stretch your upper body down from the lower spine to the floor, pulling is the object of stretching, trying to create a tremendous stretching feeling on the back of your body, all over inside out, bones to skin, fingers to toes with a smiling happy face. It's kind of poetic. Pull on your heels, roll forward, lift your hips up, stretch your spine down. Good, change, come up, arms with your ears. Try to keep a straight spine so you hinge at your hips. Good, arms down, and you let that one go. Let's do second set, feet together. Inhale, arms overhead, palms together. Interlock your fingers, release your index fingers, cross your thumbs, press your heels down, Push your hips a little forward, arms back with your ears, stretch up tall and slowly bend to the right as you push your hips to the left. So we do two of just about everything. The first set's kind of diagnostic and the second set is a little bit more medicinal, but also in the second set, often we can go a little deeper. It's not a requirement, but especially at the beginning of class, you might find that you're a lot stretchier even than a couple minutes ago, right? Just moving the body right, left, backward and forward, we slowly start to wake everything up. Keep the weight into your heels. Push your hips more forward, arms back with your ears. Left hip forward, keep your hips facing the front of your mat. Right shoulder forward, same thing, two shoulders in line, come down. Push, push, push. Change, inhale to come up and stop in the middle. Hips forward, arms back, stretch up tall and slowly drop to the left as you push your hips to the right. Now, sometimes some of us, you know, are used to being flexible and then one day we can, we come in and we can like barely move an inch or vice versa. Sometimes we're like used to being really stiff and then one day we come in and go all the way down, right? So just be open to the fact that every day is a little different. Every practice is a little different. Um, and that's what's so nice, right? Because this is not Groundhog's Day and that's a gift. Keep the weight into your heels, push your hips forward, arms back with your ears, right hip forward, see what you can do, two hips in line, left shoulder forward, never forcing the body, open your chest like a flower petal blooming, come down, push and push and push, change, inhale to come up, second heart opener, take a deep breath, full lungs, keep your eyes open, drop your head back, keep your eyes open, and then bring your arms back with your ears. Arms back, look back, fall back, way back, go back, or back. Change, inhale to come up, stretch up. Exhale, bend your knees, go down. Put your hands on the floor, drop your head, go for another walk, move your hips, shake your head. Notice what's a little bit more loose in the second set and what's still maybe a little tight. There's no right or wrong. Okay, second set, padasasana, bend your knees halfway, grab your heels, 
from behind, step on all 10 fingers, bend your elbows back. So in some styles of yoga, you bend elbows out, but in this one, you wanna bend them back behind you. Elbows to calf, shoulders to ceiling, belly button to spine. Everybody roll forward, push your big toes down, lift your hips up, and eventually you'll lock your legs. Doesn't have to be today or tomorrow. It's more important to keep stomach on thighs, chest on knees, do your best, touch your face to your shins, pull on your heels, roll forward, lift your hips up, stretch your spine down, whole body stretching, 360 degree angle stretching. One more time, pull on your heels, roll your weight forward, lift your hips up, try to lock your legs. Good, change, come up, arms with your ears, knees can bend, nice, arms down, and you let that one go. Awkward Utkatasana chair pose, waking up the lower body a little bit. Step your right foot to the right about six inches, hip width distance, insides of your feet parallel, not too big of a step. If you put your hands on your hip bones and look down, that should be the space between your feet. Keep your toes and heels where they are the whole time, so you're not going to turn your toes in or out. Okay. Awkward, you can toss it and bring your arms up parallel to the floor, tricep muscles tight, nothing loose or hanging. Suck your stomach in, bend your knees, sit back and down into a chair. Feet flat position, spine straight to begin with, 100% of your body weight in your heels, sit down, halfway only, hips into a chair. Suck your stomach in and lean your upper body back, depression to abdominal wall, contraction to abdominal muscles, suck it in, hold it in tight. Notice if your knees are coming way in, or way out. Keep six inches between toes, heels, knees, and hands. Now lift your chin up, chest up. Lean back, fall back, way back. Try to fall down backwards at the end. Good. Change. Inhale to come up. Keep your arms there. Push your hips forward and just lift your heels up so the toes point forward. Come up maximum on your tippy tippy toes like a ballerina. Stretch up first. Bend your knees and sit down. Same thing. Notice if your knees are going way in or way out. Keep the knees in line with the hips. Notice if your heels are turning in or out, keep the heels invisible behind the ankles. Heels a little higher, knees a little higher, sit down into a chair, but don't sit below a chair. Change, inhale to come up. Last part, heels down. Squeeze your knees and inner thighs together, but keep the insides of your feet parallel so the toes aren't turning in, just the knees coming in. Lift your heels and slowly sit down. Stop whenever you want or when you're a half inch off your heels. So you're never sitting like quite all the way down, right? Squeeze your knees together and forward, thighs parallel to the floor, arms parallel to the thighs, spine perfectly straight from the side, looks like you're holding a box. Re-engage your fingers, drop your shoulders and change. Slowly come up, knees together, hips forward. Good. Heels down, right foot back, arms down. Take a breath. Second set. Step your right foot to the right, hip width distance, not too big of a step, insides of your feet parallel. Bring your arms up, parallel to the floor, tricep muscles tight. Suck your stomach in, three, two, one. Bend your knees, sit back and down. So the first part is the only part where you can stick your butt out. The other two parts, you wanna push your hips forward. Keep the weight in your heels. Suck your stomach in and start to lean back. Notice if the shoulders are tensing up, roll the shoulders back and down. Engage your triceps, stomach in, lift your chin up, chest up. Good, change, inhale to come up. Keep your arms there. Push your hips a little forward down and come up all the way in your tiptoes. So for my flexi folks, if you get duck butt where you stick your butt out, I'm right there with you, you wanna tuck your tailbone under. Lift up out of your waist, stomach in, bend your knees, sit down. So you're trying to press the hips forward and lean back. Lift your heels a little higher, knees a little higher, sit down into a chair, but don't sit below a chair. Change, inhale to come up, last part, heels down. Squeeze your knees together, let your heels come a little off the floor, keep your hips forward and slowly sit down. Like you're sliding your back down a wet marble wall. The slower you do, the better you do, like an elevator ride as you get to the ground floor, slow down. Squeeze your knees together, lift your chest up, abdomen in, and change, slowly come up. Good. Heels down, right foot back, arms down. Eagle pose, Garasana. We'll do the right side first. Inhale your arms over your head. Exhale, swing your right arm under your left arm, right under the left. You can grab your shoulders. You can interlace your fingers or you can have hands in prayer. Thumbs towards your face, pinkies away from your face. Pull your elbows down. Bend your knees, sit down into a chair. Stay down there, keep your hips low, lift your chest and bring your right leg over your left leg as high as possible. Right over left. 
Start to point your right toes towards your left calf and eventually wrap your foot. Bring your knees to the right and upper body to the left. If your foot is coming out, sit down more. If you're losing your balance, upper body back. One more time, knees to the right, upper body to the left, twist like ropes, arch your upper body back at the end. Good, change. Feet together, arms over your head, left side. Exhale, left arm under your right arm, left under the right, palms together, thumbs towards your face, you can also grab shoulders or interlock fingers. Pull elbows down, bend your knees, sit down, lean back and bring your left leg over your right leg, left over right, Craft, cross, twist and breathe. And this side might feel way different, it does for me. Notice if your knees are pointing to the right side of your mat. Bring your knees to the left, back to center, and upper body to the right. So you want wrists over elbows, elbows over knees, knees over ankle, and the weight in your heel. Try to get right hip a little forward so your hips and shoulders are facing the front of your mat. Sit down more, arch your upper body back. Good, change. Feet together, arms over your head, second set. Bring your right arm under your left arm, lead palms together, thumbs towards your face. Pull your elbows down, bend your knees, sit down, lean back and bring your right leg over your left leg. Woo. Cross twist and breathe. Palms together, wrists straight. You can already tell this is going to be an interesting balancing class for me. I'm a little wobbly. Left hip forward, two hips in line, right shoulder forward, open your chest like a flower petal blooming, sit down more, weight in your heel, arch your upper body back at the end. Good, change feet together, arms over your head. Last one, finish strong. Bring your left arm under your right arm. This is like a rare occasion in class where we use momentum. Twist your arms like wet ropes. Pull your elbows down, bend your knees, sit down, lean back, and bring your left leg over your right leg. So for most of class, we um, try to avoid momentum. It's like arguably one of the things that makes yoga different from um, gymnastics or contortion or circus or dance is that we're moving slowly with control. So slowly knees to the left, slowly upper body to the right, hands towards your face, sit down more, arch your upper body back. Good, change feet together, arms over your head, arms down, party time. Okay, grab a sip of water if you want. Oh, this is my coffee. You're not supposed to drink coffee during yoga, but I am, so. Don't tell anyone. Okay. Okay, let's continue. So for the next three postures, we're going to balance on one leg. And here's the deal. If you fall out, just hop back in. So you always end on one leg, right? That's your challenge for today. Always ending on one leg, wherever you are. Standing, head to knee, Dande Mana, Janu Shrasana. Shift your weight to your left leg, lock your left leg, lift your right leg up. Point your toes, flex your toes, engage your abdominal wall. Option to stay here, or when you're ready, round down and pick up your right foot. All 10 fingers interlocked, nice tight grip, don't lose the grip. This is the setup, this is the setup for standing head to knee. If you've been coming for a while and you know your left leg is locked, no bend, no wobble, keep the grip on your foot. Inhale, breathing slowly, gently lift your right leg up. Stretch it forward until your right leg is exactly parallel to the floor. No higher, no lower, standing leg locked. Good. Take a deep breath, kick your heel forward, flex your toes back and breathe through your nose. If both legs lock, bend your elbows down. Touch your elbows to your calf muscles. One day elbows go below the calf muscles. Lock your knee, lock your knee, lock your knee. Good, change, slowly reverse out, nice. Shift your weight to your right leg. Evenly distribute your body weight on your right foot and lift your left leg up. Point your toes, flex your toes, keep your toes flexed back. Notice throughout the posture, if your heel comes to the right and your knee comes to the left, that's the hips compensating for a tight back. Try to keep the heel down and the toes up. Stomach in, round down. So to pick up my foot, I'm gonna to have to do this for a second, but then I'm gonna try and bring knee back over ankle. Standing leg should be solid, concrete. One piece, lamp post, unbroken, no knee. Inhale, lift your left leg up. 
So notice if your heel is pointing to the right and your toes are pointing to the left. Get your heel to point to the floor, toes to the ceiling, and then kick forward. Continuously keep kicking without stopping, without intermission. If both legs lock, keep your abdominal wall in, lift your chest, and bend elbows down. Keep bringing your chest down so one day elbows go below the calf muscles, heel forward, hips forward, toes back, stomach in, standing, leg locked. Good, change slowly, reverse out. You can put your hands on your back and do a little back bend, ah, or an even, hmm. Second set, shift your weight to your left leg, lock your left leg, contract your inner thigh as well as your outer thigh and squeeze your left butt cheek. Lift your right leg up, flex your toes back so the left leg is super solid and concrete. Stomach in, round down, pick up your right foot, ankle directly underneath, standing leg locked, concentrate, meditate. Don't forget to have fun. Here we go. Inhale, lift your right leg up. Heel forward, toes back. Keep the grip as best you can. If both legs lock, bend elbows down. If elbows go below calf muscles and you can balance comfortably, keep your heel down. Slowly tuck your chin to your chest. Maybe put your forehead on your knee. Heel forward, toes back, lock your standing leg. Good, take your time as you reverse out. Lovely. Last one, evenly distribute your body weight on your right foot. Big toe points forward, contract inner thigh as well as outer thigh. Lift your left leg up, toes back, hip down, stomach in. Round down and pick up your foot. All 10 fingers interlocked, even the thumbs under your foot. Lock your right leg, breathe through your nose. Don't forget to have fun. Inhale, lift your left leg up. Heel forward, toes back. You want your hips directly over your ankle from the side. If both legs lock, bend elbows down. If elbows go below calf muscles, and you can balance comfortably, slowly tuck your chin to your chest. Maybe put your forehead on your knee. Heel forward, toes back, lock your standing leg. Good, change, slowly reverse out, very nice. Okay, so that was a forward curl. It was our first compression posture where we're really rounding the spine and compressing the front of the body. So naturally, next, we do a big old back bend to stretch the front of the body. Standing bow, Dante Hamana Dhanurasana, feet together. Bring your right hand up, elbow touches the body, palm faces the ceiling. Bring your hand out to the right and give yourself a high five for practicing yoga this morning. Wee! Okay, reach back without turning or twisting your wrist. Pick up the inside of your right foot at the ankle bone, thumb with your index finger. Bring your knees together so your hips are in line. Bring your left arm up and all the way back with your ear. Lock your left leg. Point your right toes. Take a deep breath, stretch up, and go for it. Charge your body forward. Simultaneously, kick your right leg back and up. Kicking and stretching should be equal. Simultaneous, 50-50. The harder you kick, you can balance forever. So kick really hard. Slowly come down, abdomen, chest, parallel to the floor. See the foot come directly over the top of your head, two heels in line. Kick back and up, two shoulders in line. Touch your chin to your shoulder, shoulder blade, scapula coming out of the body, body down more, leg up more, kick, kick, kick. Good, change. Slowly kick yourself up, feet together, arms down, take a breath. Second set, or pardon me, not second set, left side. Bring your left hand up, bring it out to the left, reach back, pick up the inside of your left ankle at the ankle bone, thumb with your index fingers, inner thighs close together, knees together as close as you can, hips in line. Bring your right arm up and back. Now, if you're a person that goes really fast into this posture and you always fall out, what if you try going slower? Lock your right leg, point your left toes, take a deep breath, stretch up, and slowly charge your body forward. Remember, that's kind of the difference between like dance and yoga, is we're going slow with control. All five fingers together, thumb with your index finger, palm of your right hand faces the floor. Get your right arm exactly parallel to the floor. No higher, no lower, standing leg locked. Slowly come down to parallel and kick as hard as you can. Push your foot into your hand. Bring the belly down, keep your chin and chest lifted, touch your big toe to the ceiling. Body down, 
leg up, kick, kick, kick. Good, change, slowly kick yourself up, feet together, arms down, take a breath. So when we go slow, then we actually have time to notice when we start to teeter. Sometimes when we go fast, we don't even realize the moment that something gets out of balance and we fall out. If we go slow, we can notice. And then the next question is, what do you do when you notice that you're falling out? For me, it helps if I just stay still. And usually that corrects the imbalance. So sometimes the actual reason why we fall out of a posture is we're um, reacting, either overreacting or differently reacting to the initial imbalance which I also think happens outside of the room, right? Sometimes like our actual kind of like failure situation is like we reacted kind of incorrectly to the initial problem, right? And so same thing here, if we go slow with control, then it's a little bit easier to correct that imbalance and then maybe you can stay in a little bit longer, but you gotta go slow. Second set, bring your right hand up, bring it out to the right, reach back, pick up the inside of your right ankle, at the ankle bone, knees together, left arm up, and back with your ear, lock your left leg, point your right toes, take a deep breath, stretch up, and slowly kick, stretch, and breathe. And when we go slow, we really start to notice the moment that that hip pops up, drop it down, that chin drops, lift it up, the fingers come apart, keep them together. When you go slow, you can notice, and that's where it becomes meditative a moving meditation. You're aware of your breath, every cell in your body, but not much else in the room. Lock your left leg, concentrate, meditate, point your right toes, come down, body down, leg up, kick, kick, kick. Good, change, kick yourself up. Last one, bring your left hand up, bring it out to the left, reach back, and pick up the inside of your ankle, knees together. Right arm up and back with your ear. Lock your right leg, point your left toes, take a deep breath, stretch up, and slowly kick, stretch, and breathe. So for those of you that always fall out, have heart, keep going, kick harder, go slower, do a little less. For those of you who figured out how to stay in it every single time, take a risk, go deeper, do something different. Even if you fall out, that's okay. Bring the body down, left hip down, left ear down, big toe up, body down, leg up, kick, kick, kick. Good, change, kick yourself up. We come to the back of your mat and tell a very nice Tula Dandasana balancing stick. Feet together, inhale your arms over your head, palms together, interlock your fingers, release your index fingers, cross your thumbs, nice tight grip. Bring your head and arms back with your ears. Step your right foot forward a big step, lock both legs, point your left toes, and slowly tilt like a seesaw. Arms, body, head, legs, everything parallel to the floor. So from the side, body makes a T like Tom, not a broken umbrella. Stretch, stretch, stretch. Good, change, left foot down, right foot back, arms back, puff up your chest. Step your left foot forward, lock both legs, point your right toes, and slowly tilt. So even though it's a short posture, you wanna go down with control, and that helps you to keep the spine straight. Every muscle in your body contracting. Charge your body forward, lift your right heel up, stretch forward, stretch back. Good, change right foot down, left foot back, arms down, take a breath. Moving the breath through the body. Second set, feet together, arms overhead, palms together, interlock your fingers, release your index fingers, Cross your thumbs, maybe switch the grip, opposite thumb, pinky finger on top. Step your right foot forward, lock both legs, point your left toes and tilt. Try to keep your left hip down, spiral your inner left thigh up, bring your left foot a little to the left. Biceps of your ears, squeeze your palms, stretch. Good, change, left foot down, right foot back. Last one, just for fun. Step your left foot forward, lock both legs, Point your right toes and slowly come down. Suck your stomach in, nice straight spine, flat back, biceps with ears, push your biceps into your ears, lift your heel up, stretch, stretch, stretch. Good, change right foot down, left foot back, arms down. Enough of that, come to the top of your mat. You're welcome to face the long side of your mat for the next three postures. 
I will continue to face you. So for the next three postures, we balance on two separate legs. It's called the separate leg series. Very creative, I know. So we just did the balancing series. Now we're doing the separate leg series. Balancing on two legs instead of one. Standing separate leg stretching, Dande Mana, Vikaptapada, Paschimottanasana. Inhale your arms over your head. Exhale, step your right foot to the right. Big step, four feet minimum, arms down, parallel to the floor. Turn your toes in, heels out, lock your legs, lift your chest, and swan dive forward. Flat back, chin away from your chest. Grab your heels. So for the separate leg postures, for this one and the next two, um, the step really depends on your body, not just how tall you are, but like the proportion of your legs to your spine. So don't be afraid to play around with taking a larger or smaller step for this posture or the next two. After you've moved your feet around a bit, if you still can't grab your heels, no problem. See if you can grab the outsides of your feet so you can pull, or you can always start with your hands on the floor in front of you. Everybody roll forward like a wheel into the balls of your feet, lift your hips up, pull and stretch. First the leg stretching, then the hip stretching, lower spine stretching, whole spine stretching, whole body stretching. Three, 60 degree angle stretching, coccyx to toes, coccyx to forehead, touch your forehead to the floor in between your feet. If your forehead's not yet touching the floor, open your step more and more and more. Roll forward, lift your hips up, squeeze your thighs tight, lock your legs. Good, change. Slowly come up with control as blood flow reverses. Nice, step your right foot back to the place, arms over your head, arms down. So if your forehead touched the floor in the first set, take a smaller step. If your forehead was nowhere near the floor, take a bigger step, keep it simple. Second set, stretching, arms overhead. Step your right foot to the right step that works for you. Toes in, heels out, lock your legs, puff up your chest and swan dive forward. Lead with your heart all the way down. If you don't have a heart, lead with your lower ribs all the way down. Keep coming back to yoga. You will cry eventually. Grab your heels from behind. Bend your elbows back. So again, in some styles of yoga, you would bend the elbows out, but in this one, elbows back. Elbows to calves, shoulders to ceiling, belly button to spine. Everybody roll forward. It's not enough to have straight legs. You really want to squeeze your quads, contract your thighs. So lift the hips up away from the floor, defying gravity. If your forehead's not touching the floor, take a bigger step. Everybody roll forward, lift your hips up, pull stretch, touch your forehead to the floor in between your feet. Good. Change. Slowly come up. Nice. Step your right foot back, arms over your head, arms down. Next posture is triangle trikonasana. For most of us, it's the widest step we take. But again, don't be afraid to play around with taking a slightly larger or slightly smaller step because every body is different. Trikonasana triangle. Here we go. Inhale, arms overhead. Exhale, step your right foot to the right. Big step, arms down parallel to the floor. I always take a big step, like an initial step, and then I open my feet even more. Push your hips forward, lean your upper body back, turn your right foot out, left toes in, turn your right foot out a half inch more. Inhale, bend your right leg and lunge. Start to sit down so your right leg makes an upside down L, like Linda. Keep your hips down low, lean your upper body back, spine straight in the middle, and just move your arms. Right elbow in front of the knee, aim your right fingers towards your big and second toe. Don't touch the floor, don't push any weight on the floor, come up. Hover your fingers above the big and second toe. Now look up, touch your chin to your shoulder, all five fingers together, thumbs with your index fingers. Push your left hip forward and down. Push your right knee back with the help of your elbow, turn. Twist upper body back like spine twisting posture, lock your left leg. Keep your whole left foot, even your pinky toe, flat on the floor. Good, change, rotate your arms, straighten your right leg. Right toes in, left toes out. Make sure your heels are in line, not crisscross. Inhale, bend your left leg and lunge. Keep sitting down low. Now here's the deal. If your step is too short, you can't sit down very low and you can hurt your knee if the knee goes beyond your ankle. Simply taking a larger step and maybe turning the right toes in a little bit will help you sit down more. Lean back and move your arms. Elbow in front of the knee, hover your fingers just above your big and second toe. Make sure all five fingers together on both hands, wrist straight. Look up towards the ceiling and breathe. Push your right hip forward and down. So always trying to sink that right thigh down. Push your left knee back with the help of your elbow. Notice if your knee is going to the right of your ankle, you want your knee directly tracking with your ankle. Look up and stretch up, reach your right arm up, Stretch your left arm down in opposite directions. 
like natural human traction, turn, twist up your body back, lock your right leg, right foot flat on the floor. Good, change, rotate your arms, straighten your left leg, left toes in, right foot back, arms over your head, arms down. There's a funny thing that happens in this style of yoga when we do it enough. Um, we get a Pavlovian response, where if you hear the teacher say, turn, twist up your body back, lock your left leg, left foot flat on the floor, you know that it's over. And on, the, right? and on the one hand, I like that. I love that assurance that I know the order of things. And at the same time, sometimes I'm not actually in the posture. I'm just listening for lock your left leg, left foot flat on the floor. Notice if that's happening for you. For sure, it's meant to be meditative. That's one of the be like beautiful things about doing the same postures every day. It's healing, but it's also meditative. But notice if like you're just waiting for the change. Try to hold on in the present moment. Enjoy the posture itself. Second set, triangle, arms overhead. Step your right foot to the right, big step. Arms down parallel to the floor. Push your hips forward, lean your upper body back, savoring even the setup. Turn your right foot out, maybe left toes in. Bend your right leg and lunge. Sit as low as you can. You can never force your body. Keep sinking that left hip down. Keep your spine straight in the middle and move your arms. Right elbow in front of the knee. Hover your fingers just above your big and second toe. Look up to the ceiling. Touch your chin to your shoulder and breathe. Stomach in the whole time. Drop your left thigh down. Reach your spine up. So you want one long diagonal line from your ankle all the way to the crown of your head. Sit down more. Chest up more. Turn. Twist upper body back. Lock your left leg, keep your whole left foot, even your pinky toe, flat on the floor. Change, rotate your arms, straighten your right leg, right toes in, left toes out, two heels in line. Inhale, bend your left leg, sit all the way down. And you can take a bigger or smaller step if it helps you gain control. Sit down more, squeeze your butt cheeks tight, and move your arms. So you're trying to press the hips forward and lean the upper body back. Eventually in this posture, you could lean your whole back against a wall behind you. I'm not quite there yet. I tend to fold forward a little bit. Push your hips forward, stomach in, upper body back. Bring your left shoulder forward and right shoulder back. Sit down more, turn twist upper body back, lock your right leg, right foot, flat on the floor. Nice, change. Rotate your arms, straighten your left leg, left toes in, right foot back, arms over your head, arms down. Wonderful. Standing separate leg, head to knee. Dande Amana Vikakta Pada Jani Shrasana. Inhale your arms over your head, palms together, just cross your thumbs. Exhale, step your right foot to the right, three feet, 36 inches, pivot on your heels. If you're on the long side of your mat, you will face the back of your mat. Turn your back toes in, push your hips forward, one, two, three, four, five times. Two hips in line, two heels in line. Backside foot should make a 45 degree angle. Stretch up. Tuck your chin to your chest and go down. Round your spine. Tuck your chin to your chest. Put your forehead on your knee. This is our second head to knee, Johnny Shirasana pose. Every time you hear head to knee, know that it's just as much about compressing your front as it is about rounding your back. Bend your right leg. Try to bring your knee and head close together. So front side compression, throat choked, eyes open, breathing normal. Stretch all 10 fingers. Just be on your big and second toe. Bring maximum weight to your right front foot. Right hip up, left hip forward, two hips in line. Push your forehead into your knee. Lock both legs, hands together. Change, slowly uncurl. Vertebra by vertebra, disc by disc, head up last. Good, pivot on your heels. Pivot on your heels. If your heels are crisscross, uncross your heels. Take a bigger step. Turn your back toes in. Push your hips forward until your hips are even. And if you're facing the front of your mat, the goal is to get your hips and armpits square to the front of your mat, just like half moon. Stretch up tall, tuck your chin to your chest, and go down. So try to keep your hips square. Right hip forward, 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 all the way down. Chin tucked to chest. Now, just like the other two postures, you might need to play around with your step. You can take a wider or smaller step. Bend your front leg as much as you need. Touch your knee and head together. And if your forehead and knee aren't touching today, don't force it. Just keep coming back. The repetition is really like more powerful than the depth of the postures, right? So just slowly over time, as you repeat this movement, the knee and head get a little closer together. Stretch all 10 fingers beyond big and second toe. Bring maximum weight to your front leg. Left hip up, right forward, 
two hips in line. Push your forehead into your knee, lock both legs, hands together, change, slowly uncurl, right hip forward, full stop at the top. Good, pivot on your heels, right foot back, arms down. Very nice, second set, head to knee, shall we? Feet together, arms overhead, palms together, only cross your thumbs. Step your right foot to the right, three to four feet, a generous step, be generous with yourself. Shift the weight into your heels, lift your toes and pivot on your heels. Press your left hip forward, peel your right rib cage back. Maybe inner thighs squeeze together. Stretch up, tuck your chin to your chest, and go down. Try to feel each and every part of your spine moving. The parts of your back that you don't feel moving are usually where we're tightest. For me, for most of us, it's the middle back. Round your spine, so press your hips forward, engage your abdominal wall, touch forehead and knee together. Maybe in the second set, start to walk your hands back together. Maybe thumbs cross, maybe palms together. Not because you have to, but because you can. That's the spirit of this class. Push your forehead into your knee. Lock both legs, hands together. Change, slowly uncurl as if you're dragging your forehead up your thigh, your chest, head up last. Good, pick up your toes, pivot 180 degrees. Whee! Adjust your step, turn your back toes in, Press your right hip forward, peel your left hip back, right shoulder forward, left shoulder back, stretch up, tuck your chin to your chest, go down. Biceps of the ears, chin to chest, hips forward. Try to keep your jaw relaxed, even as you press the chin into the chest. So some yogis believe that pushing the chin and chest together stimulates the thyroid parathyroid. Pushing forehead into knee stimulates pineal. Pulling the belly in, massages the internal organs, compressing the pancreas on the deepest level of the abdominal wall, rounding the spine, stretches the kidneys on the lower middle back. You can believe that or not. I don't know, but I figured it couldn't help hurt to tell you, right? This is a great way to round your spine and compress your stomach. Push your forehead into your knee, lock both legs, hands together, change, slowly uncurl, full stop at the top, good. Pivot on your heels, right foot back, arms down. So, you know, if you ever hear a yoga teacher talk about like your pineal gland or like your third eye chakra or something like that, um, when I say that, I'm not telling you that as like, I believe in it medically, but I do believe that there's a lot of things in yoga that are being proven through Western science right now that are then getting renamed and not cited, which is not very scientific in my opinion. So um, when I say stuff like, you could massage your pineal gland, I don't know if I actually believe that, but at this point, like there's a lot of cool science coming out about yoga. So I figure like we might as well name that, right? If that's what like people before us believed in. Okay, come to the middle of your mat and towel for the hip opening series. First tree pose and then toe stand. Shift your weight to your left leg, lock your left leg and lift your right leg up. You can put your foot on your shin, your knee, your thigh, eventually heel the costume, sole of foot flat to ceiling. Slowly, gently let your right knee drop down and back into a half lotus shape, never force your knees. Right hand up to the center of your chest, and if you can balance, left hand up. Press your hips a little forward, and now lift up out of your waist. Try to eliminate any curvature in your spine. The cool thing about the human body is that muscles, joints, ligaments, tendons, they hold up bone, not the other way around, which means that by working on our muscles, by opening our joints, all that stuff, we can actually improve our alignment. There's always hope. Change, right leg down. Lock your right leg and lift your left leg up. Touch your heel to your costume, sole of foot flat to ceiling, and let your left knee drop down. You can bring your left hand up, and if you can balance, right hand up, but if your foot slides, continue to hold on to your foot with your hand. The other cool thing about exercise is that we know that it helps us maintain bone density. So this truly is an all over inside out, bones to skin, fingers to toes of the smiling, happy face workout, right? You're stretching your muscles, you're strengthening your muscles, you're working through tightness in your joints, tendons, ligaments, and you're also maintaining bone density, right? So a wonderful thing to do as you go through your journey of life. Change, left leg down. Uh, you can do a second set of that tree pose. You can also try another fun posture called toe stand. If you're new to toe stand, watch me. Otherwise, pick a spot on the floor, four feet in front of you, don't move your eyes. Doing this helps with balance, and it's also a really wonderful um, practice and concentration, which I think a lot of us are like 
struggling with concentration right now, or at least I am. Shift your weight to your left leg, lock your left leg, and lift your right leg up. Anywhere above the knee is great. You can bring one or both hands together, namaskar. Suck your stomach in and start to fold forward. Dangle forward at first, fingers to floor, walk your hands forward, lean forward, lift your heel, bend your knee, and sit down. Walk your hands back to either sides of your hips as you breathe in and out through your nose. Left hand up, right hand up, elbows down, spine straight, maybe come a half inch off your heel. And if that's easy, maybe roll your eyes to meet your own gaze. So the last thing you do is move your eyes, even shifting focus. Good, okay. When you're ready, put your hands on the floor, lift your hips up, straighten your standing leg, and then push your hips forward. You can also come up on two feet, no problem. Nice, change right leg down. Lock your right leg and lift your left leg up, all the way up. If your foot is prone to sliding, hold on to it on the way down. It's safer for your knees. Otherwise, bring one or both hands together, stomach in, concentrate, meditate. Don't forget to have fun. Fold forward. If you've been coming for a while, go down with a flat back, straight spine. Put your hands on the floor, lean forward, lift your heel, bend your knee, sit down. Lock your hands back. Other little things. Notice if one knee is way higher than the other, try to get your knees in line, point your left toes. Left hand up, right hand up, elbows down, spine straight. Maybe come a half inch off your heel, maybe change your focus gaze. Good, when you're ready, put your hands on the floor, lift your hips up and reverse out. You can also come up on two feet, no problem. Nice. Good stuff, change. Left leg down, on yourself, give yourself high five, fist bump, turn around, savasana, and adjust this angle. So head to the front of your mat, feet to the back of your mat. Glorious. We are on the floor for the rest of class. What a delight. Bring your heels together, let your toes fall open. Arms down, palms face the ceiling, eyes open, mouth closed, breathing normal. So I've been having this conversation with a lot of you, um, yogis, but also like non-yoga friends. And um, boy, a lot of people I know are really struggling to focus right now. Like, like even reading a chapter of a book isn't as, isn't as easy as it used to be. And you know, the first thing that I have to remind myself and I want to remind you too is like, this circumstance that we are in is not normal. So don't pretend that it is and don't make yourself feel like you have to be as productive as you used to be or feel the same way as you used to be. This weird pandemic circumstance is not normal. All that being said, yoga, meditation are wonderful tools to compassionately cultivate a little bit of focus. So you're not being hard on yourself when you can't read a, you know, a chapter of a book you're compassionately, you know, helping yourself kind of return to whatever it is you're focusing on, right? And that I think is actually what makes it work, is that we're not being hard on ourselves when we fall out of a posture, when we realize that our mind is wandering, we're just like gently returning ourselves to the breath, to the truth of the present moment. So just notice exactly where you are, exactly who you are, how you are, And just take a breath and enjoy the inhale, enjoy the exhale, and enjoy the pause between. There's four nodes of breathing. There's the inhale, the exhale, but there's that little space between. Sometimes just by focusing on that minute moment between the inhale and exhale, between the exhale and inhale, We become a little bit more calm and a lot more focused. That's a practice you can do anytime you're just feeling a little bit frazzled. Take a moment to focus on your breath and the, you know, the really beautiful space between the breath. We continue, Pavana Mukhasana, when you're moving pose. Lift your right leg up, interlock your 10 fingers, grab your right shin, nice tight white knuckle grip. Pull your knee out and down and hold, avoid your rib cage, keep your head on the floor. Look down the center line of your body, pull down extra hard, maximum pressure in your lower abdomen, massaging your ascending colon, fun. 
change, right? Leg down, left leg up, pull your knee out and down. Nice tight grip on this side, massaging your descending colon. Keep your right leg on the floor. If your right calf muscle doesn't naturally touch the floor, that's normal. Try flexing your right toes back towards your face to anchor the calf, the hip, the shoulder down so you're not rolling too far to the left. Change, left leg down and both legs lift up. Grab your elbows, each other. Give yourself a really big hug for coming to class this morning. Yes, good for you. Squeeze your knees together and down. Keep your head on the floor. Two heels in line, side by side, not crisscross. Look down the center line of your body and hold stills. Posture massages the transverse colon and it starts to um, soften the spine. So eventually or in the future, when the bone joint skeletal system has improved, the whole spine from coccyx to the neck will be flat on the floor. Change, arms down and eyes open. Second set, right leg up, interlock your 10 fingers. Maybe switch the grip, opposite thumb, pinky finger on top. Pull your knee out and down. Push the pads of your fingers into the backs of your hands. It's a good grip strengthener. It's also a nice way to open the hips and chest. So pull the elbows down, draw the knee closer to the armpit, but never force your hip. Change, right leg down, left leg up. Pull your knee out and down. Um, so this is actually part of the hip opening series, just like tree pose and toe stand. If you think about it, right, if you brought your left foot to the right and your left knee to the left, you would be in tree pose, right? So it's a little different. Bring your left foot to the left and right shoulder to the right. So shoulders, hips, and ankles are running parallel to your spine like train tracks. Change, left leg down and both legs lift up. Grab your elbows each other, give yourself another big hug, maybe opposite elbow on top if you remember. Keep your head on the floor, look down the center line of your body and breathe, hold still. Give yourself a big affirmation here, squeeze tight. Good, change, arms down and eyes open. Take a breath. Notice the pause between the breath. Next, we do a straight leg sit up. If you have any concerns about your back today though, please skip the sit up. Roll off to the side and meet us on your stomach. Otherwise, legs together, arms over your head, tuck your chin to your chest and sit up. <sighs> Wonderful, elbows to floor, forehead to knees. Okay, everybody turn over, lie on your stomach for the spine strengthening series, starting with Cobra Bhujangasana, good for your lower lumbar spine. Place your hands on the floor, just below your shoulders. Little fingers in line with your deltoids, elbows point up to the ceiling like grasshopper wings. Zip up your legs like a cobra's tail, toes and heels touch. Lock your legs, look up and lift. Stretch your upper body off the floor. Use 100% lower spine strength. Come up halfway only, just your belly button on the floor. The rest of your chest is in the air. Elbows stay bent, they make an L, a 90 degree angle like a rectangle. Hug your arms into your sides, roll your shoulders back and down, touch your elbows to your hips. Keep your feet together, toes and heels touch. Lock your legs, push your feet down, squeeze your butt, push your hips down, push your hands down, creating a little bit of resistance between your hands on the floor to wake up the upper back muscles. Look up, chin up, chest up, stretch up, breathe up. Good, change, slowly lower down, look to the right, left ear on the towel, arms down, Palms face the ceiling, toes together, heels fall open. So this is the beginning of the spine strengthening series. And it helps me sometimes to remember that it's not called the spine flexibility series, right? It's called the spine strengthening series. So we're going to, you know, use a leverage with different parts of our body throughout these postures, whether it's pushing your hands on the floor or your shoulders on the floor or your feet or your hips on the floor. We're always going to make contact with part of the floor as leverage and then lift the other parts of the body up. Second set, bring your chin forward, hands flat on the floor, feet together, toes, heels touch, lock your legs, look up and lift. So keep your feet, hips and hands on the floor, lock your legs. For a lot of us, when we lock our legs, the thighs start to lift up, but the feet and the hips stay grounded. This is a good way to start to isolate the back strength. Same thing, you're not like pushing your hands all the way into the floor, but you're also not hovering them above. A little bit of resistance between hands and floor goes a long way to open the back muscles and to open your chest. So the shoulders start to open up, the chest starts to open up, chin a little away from your chest, 
push feet, hips, hands down, look up, chin up, chest up, stretch up, breathe up. Good, change, slowly lower down, look to the left right here on the towel, arms down, heels open. It's one of the things I love about yoga, it teaches us like a little bit of resistance or a little bit of tension isn't bad, right? Like in standing bow pose, if there was no tension between your foot and your hand, you would fall out. Like not all tension is bad, not all resistance is bad, but we're always using it for leverage, right? Not just as a thing in and of itself. Don, uh, not Dhanurasana, next we're gonna do Lokish Shalavasana. Bring your chin forward, arm straight position, bring your arms underneath you as best you can. Palms face the floor, thumbs outside, fingers inside. So one day pinky fingers touch. If your thumbs are touching, flip your palms the other way, palms face the floor. Lock your right leg, point your right toes and lift your right leg up to a 45 degree angle, half of 90. See the foot come directly over the top of your head. Lock your right leg, point your right toes, lift your thigh up. Good, change slowly with control, lower down. Relax your right leg, lock your left leg, point your left toes, and lift your left leg up. So try to root down through all 28 knuckles, not just your wrists. Push down the space between your index finger and thumb, lift your heel a little higher, and breathe. Change, left leg down, third part, tuck your chin and back down, bring your arms a little closer underneath you, spread your fingers wide, squeeze your butt, lock your legs, point your toes, and lift both legs up, come up, everybody come up, you can do it. Struggle a little harder, don't give up, mouth down, shoulders down, triceps tight. So use the leverage, hands on the floor, shoulders down, thighs up, good, change, slowly lower down, bring your arms out, look to the right, left ear on the towel, and breathe. All you have to do is breathe. So you should probably do second set, here we go. Bring your chin forward, arms straight, rotate your arms. Palms face the floor. Bring your arms underneath you as best you can. Spread your fingers wide. Lock your right leg, point your right toes, and lift your right leg up all the way up. See the foot come over the top of your head. Notice if your foot's coming to the left of your head, try to keep forearm and hip touching. Spiral your inner right thigh up so sole of right foot is flat to the ceiling. Change. Right leg down, relax your right leg, lock your left leg, point your left toes, and lift your left leg up. So we're in what's called locust pose, but fun fact, actual locust pose is both legs lifting up. This one-legged part is just a warm up. See how high you can lift your left foot. Good, change, left leg down. So that's how high you can lift both at once, anatomically speaking. Keep that sensation in your mind and your body. Tuck your chin in, so this time long neutral neck, mouth on your mat, bring your arms a little closer underneath you, spread your fingers wide, mouth down, micro bend your elbows, mouth down, squeeze your butt, lock your legs, point your toes, use the leverage of your forearms, lift both legs up, come up, everybody come up, you can do it, knees together, lock your legs a little bit more, can you lock your legs a little bit more, mouth down, shoulders down, use the leverage of your arms, lift your heels up, good, change, slowly lower down, bring your arms out, releasing the tourniquet effect, look to the left and breathe. So in that posture, right, we stretch out the joints, the ligaments, the arms, and then when we release out, we get a nice rush of blood through the fingers, knuckles, wrists, elbows, shoulders. Posture is so good for frozen shoulder, carpal tunnel, tennis elbow, any of that. Super fun stuff. Okay, done. Second, or no, not second set, full locust, Prana Shalabhasana, bring your chin forward, arms out to the side like airplane wings. If you hear me laughing in class, I'm laughing at myself, not at you. Feet together, toes, heels touch, unless I actively say that I'm laughing at you, which does sometimes happen. Lock your legs, point your toes, look up, and lift. Arms, body, head, legs, everything. Lifts off the floor. 747, taking off just your hip bones on the floor. The rest of your body's in the air. Look up to the ceiling where your eyes go. Body nose to follow. Keep your feet together, toes, heels touch. Um, try to keep your neck in line with the rest of your spine. So you're not like dropping the head down, but you're also not jamming it up. Feet together, thighs up, chin up, chest up, use the leverage, push your hips into the floor, come up a little higher at the end. Good, change, slowly lower down, tuck in your wings, look to the right, left ear on the towel. You're using that resistance of the part of your body that's touching the floor. To this day, when I think of resistance, I still think of Star Wars, which Jason, a long time ago, you were like, when does second season of Mandalorian come out? And it comes out October 30th, who's excited for that? Stack and set, let's use some resistance, bring your arms out to the side. This is the way, feet together, toes, heels touch, lock your legs, 
point your toes, look up, and fly. If you've not seen The Mandalorian talk to me after class, I will give you my Disney Plus account information. Bring your feet together, toes, heels touch the whole time, all five fingers together, thumbs with your index fingers, lock your arms, lock your legs, and breathe. So remember, you're gonna use the resistance, the leverage from your hips and lower abdomen on the floor to come up. Thighs up, chin up, chest up, use some leverage, look up, come up a little higher at the end. Good, change slowly with control, lower down. Tuck in your wings, look to the left, and let that one go. Take an inhale. Take an exhale. Okay, bring your chin forward, bend your legs, grab your feet from the outside, all five fingers together, thumbs with your index fingers. Squeeze your butt, point your toes, look up to the ceiling, and start to kick into your hands. Continuously keep kicking. Very nice without stopping, without intermission. It's the kick that drives the posture. Now notice if you're rocking back and forth a lot, roll forward once and then freeze between your ribs and your hips. Try to get everything else off the floor. Beautiful. Bring your knees in, feet out, wrists straight, look up to the ceiling. So put some tension between your hands and your feet to open your chest and bend your spine. Kick, kick, kick. Good. Change. Slowly lower down. Look to your right, left ear on the towel, still breathing. In and out through your nose. Back and set, bring your chin forward, bend your legs, grab your feet from the outside, all five fingers together. Squeeze your buns, point your toes, look up and kick as hard as you can. Now, notice if your knees are way wider than your hips. I struggle with that. Try to bring knees in a little bit, but notice if your feet are touching, feet out a little bit. Try to point big toes and pinky toes up to the ceiling. Now, if your wrists are bending a whole bunch, straighten your wrists. Bring the insides of your wrists closer together and kick harder. Body down, thighs up, look up, kick, kick, kick. Nice, change, slowly lower down. Look to your left, right ear on the towel, take a breath. And let's continue. Bring your chin forward, put your hands on the floor, push up. Come to the top of your mat and towel for fixed firm, souped of a drasana. I'll show you first step from the side. Open your feet, open your knees, start in tabletop position. Walk your hands back. And this might be as far as you go. You can have your hands on the floor in front of you, beside you, or behind you the whole time, no problem. Slowly over time, sink your hips down to the floor. Remember, it's the repetition of this movement that will heal the body. If you can sit down between your heels, put your hands on your feet, right elbow down, left elbow down, drop your head back, head on the floor, tuck your chin in, neck, shoulders on the floor, arms over your head, grab your elbows, each other, and hold. Wherever you are is just perfect. This is one of those postures where a little bit goes a long way. You want a gentle stretch through your toes, ankles, knees, and hips, but never a point of pain. Make sure your knees stay on the floor the whole time. Change, put your hands on your feet, carefully push yourself up. Have up, lost, turn around, savasana, head to the front of your mat, feet to the back of your mat. And as you release out, you get this nice stretch of blood through your toes, ankles, knees, and hips. So the release is just as therapeutic as the posture itself. So second set, maybe you can go a little deeper, but maybe not. Maybe first set, you went a little too far, so you ease up. Totally up to you. You can roll off to the side here and skip the sit-up. Otherwise, legs together, arms over your head, tuck your chin to your chest, sit up. Good. Come to the top of your mat and towel. Second set, open your feet, open your knees. You can even stay here and tabletop the whole time. As you're ready, slowly walk your hands back. Slowly sink your hips down. When you go slow, you notice when you've hit your edge and then you just hold still there. If you can sit between your heels comfortably, put your hands on your feet, right elbow down, left elbow down, drop your head back, head on the floor, tuck your chin in, neck, shoulders on the floor, arms over your head, grab your elbows, maybe other elbow on top. If all that's gravy, walk your knees back together, lift your chest higher, but knees never come off the floor. Change. Put your hands on your feet. Push yourself up. Good. Head up last. Turn around. Shavasana. Good stuff. Still breathing.
Remember, all you have to do is breathe. So if the sit-ups ever start to bother your back, you can skip them. The sit-ups, like everything we do, are optional. Legs together, arms over your head, flex your feet, squeeze your seat, sit up. Good, turn, come towards the back of your mat for half tortoise, Ardha Pramasana. I'll show you from the side. Knees, feet together, hips on your heels, arms over your head, palms together, cross your thumbs. If it hurts to sit on your feet, you're welcome to start by standing on your shins. Stretch up first and with a flat back, go down. Now you're welcome to put one or both hands on the floor and walk yourself in. Otherwise, go down, arms with your ears, forehead to floor, little fingers to floor. Try to get elbows and wrists off the floor. Just the knife edges of your pinky fingers touch the floor. The rest of your arms are in the air. As you inhale, reach your arms forward. As you exhale, sink your hips down, stretch, stretch, stretch. Good, change, slowly come up, arms with your ears, stomach in, nice, arms down, turn around, savasana. So every savasana is just a nice opportunity for the body to recalibrate, for blood to circulate freely through the body. Legs together, arms over your head, tuck your chin to your chest, sit up. Come to the back of your mat and tall second set, half tortoise, knees, feet together, hips on your heels, arms over your head, palms together, cross your thumbs, stretch up tall, and slowly go down. The slower you do, the better you do. Like an elevator ride, as your head gets close to the floor, slow down even more. Forehead to floor, little fingers to floor, reach your arms forward, sink your hips down, re-energize, reorganize, revitalize. Good, change, slowly come up, squeeze your feet together, palms together, nice, arms down, turn around, savasana. So let's talk about the sit-ups. Um, obviously, as sit-ups are wont to do, they're good for your abdominal strength, okay? They're also rounded spine sit-ups. So you're trying to like get elbows to floor, forehead to knees every time. And the other thing is that um, you <laughs> exhale through your mouth. So there's three times that we exhale through our mouth throughout class. There's the first breathing exercise, the final breathing exercise, and then the in the sit-ups. And the whole idea of that is the one, it pushes the air out so that you can suck your stomach in more so that you can round your spine more, but it also wakes up the central nervous system. So towards the end of class, when we do this like double exhale, it helps to wake up the body so that you can still stay a little bit present towards the end of class, especially in the 90 minute version. Legs together, arms over your head, tuck your chin to your chest, sit up. Round the spine, good, okay. Try and come to the top of your mat and top for camel ustrasana, our deepest back bend. I'm gonna stand back a little bit and show you the first step from the side. Stand on your knees, six inches between your knees and your feet. If you have tight knees, you're welcome to roll up your mat a little bit so there's extra padding under your knees. Place your hands on your waistband spine, thumbs outside, fingers down to the floor. Push your hips forward, keep your eyes open, look up. Lift your chin. This might be enough. When you're ready, look up towards the ceiling. Maybe drop your head back. You can keep your hands on your back the whole time. One day go back halfway. Freeze in the middle. You can stay here or right hand down, grab your right heel. Left hand down, grab your left heel. Thumbs outside, fingers inside, full palm grip on your heels. If you can't grab your heels, keep your hands on your back to support your spine. Push your hips forward, lift your chest up, drop your head back, look for your toes behind you. Good. When you're ready, put your hands on your back first and then change without twisting your spine. Head comes up last. Good. Turn around. Savasana. Head to the front of your mat, feet to the back of your mat. Breathing normal. Whatever you feel is normal, Savasana makes it better. If you need to cry, cry. If you need to laugh, laugh. Just be honest with yourself about your experience in your body with these movements in this unique space and time. Second set, legs together, arms over your head, tuck your chin to your chest, sit up. 
Good. So we're acknowledging any sensations in the body, heart, or mind, but we're also practicing non-attachment. So we're just noticing and then carrying on. Second set, open your knees a little wider, eight to 10 inches between your knees, still keep six inches between your feet. Put your hands on your lower back, first elbows out, eventually elbows in towards each other. Push your hips forward, keep your eyes open, and just go at your own pace. This might be enough. You want to find a place where you can hold still and breathe. It's better to be able to stay a little bit longer and do a little less than to force your way into a posture, hold it for one second, and then have to fly out. As you're ready, go back halfway, eventually right hand down, left hand down. And sometimes when you go slow, you'll actually find that you can go a little deeper. It just takes you longer to get there, but it's more sustainable. Mm. Push your hips forward, lift your chest up, drop your head back, hold still and breathe. Good, place your hands on your back first and change, push yourself up. Mm, head up last, turn around, Savasana. Let the floor hold you up. Take a breath. Notice the pause between the inhale and exhale. Let's keep going. Legs together, arms over your head. Tuck your chin to your chest, sit up. <laughs> Wonderful, come to the middle of your mat and towel for rabbit sasangasana. Sit knees, feet together, hips on your heels. Make L's with your hands like little bunny ears and then flip the L's down. Grab your heels from the outside. Stretch up, rabbit pose, let's hop to it. Tuck your chin to your chest and go down. So this posture is all about rounding the spine. It's a counter pose to camel. Bring forehead to knees, top of head to floor, full palm grip on your heels. Don't lose the grip, lift your hips up. If there's a gap between your knees and head, you can walk your knees up one by one, but head stays in place. Your feet are coming off the floor or your grip is sliding, ease up a little bit. There's very little weight in your head and neck. Squeeze your heels together, press your feet down, lift your shoulders up, round your spine. Good. Change. Hips down slowly, uncurl vertebra by vertebra, disc by disc. Head up last. Good. Turn around, Savasana. So I, I forgot to say this earlier, but this posture that we're in rabbit, as well as camel, half tortoise, and fixed firm, this posture in the three before it, it's what's called the fixed firm series. And the idea is that for this posture in the last three, right, the tops of our feet, ankles, shins, and knees are fixed firmly on the floor. So in, you know, in the first one, if I'm like, be careful, don't let your knees come off the floor. In this one, be careful, don't let your feet come off the floor. You want your feet grounded into the floor the whole time, it's safer for your neck. Second set, let's try it. Legs together, arms over your head, tuck your chin to your chest, sit up. Good, okay. Turn, come to the middle of your mat and towel. Knees, feet together, hips on your heels. Make L's with your hands, flip the L's down, grab your heels from the outside. Stretch up first, tuck your chin to your chest, and go down, round your spine. Stomach in, hips forward, forehead to knees, top of head to floor, pull on your heels, don't lose the grip, lift your hips up. If there's a gap between knees and head, you can walk your knees up one by one, but head stays in place. Squeeze your heels together, press your hips forward, lift your shoulders up, round your spine. Good, change, hips down, slowly uncurl, head up last, turn around, Savasana. Almost to the end, everybody's doing great. I always think it's funny, my Saturday 10 a.m. rabbit pose is the hardest rabbit pose of my week, and my Sunday 4 p.m. rabbit is the easiest, and it drives me crazy, a 30 hour difference, and one is like so much easier than the other. But as a reminder, like 
you know, the hour that we practice affects our body, the day that we practice affects our body, changing seasons affects our practice. So that's one of the things that I love about the postures staying the same is that it's a control group, right? And you get to see how like practicing in the morning works versus at night, um, practicing on the weekend versus the weekday, practicing right after you've eaten a whole pint of ice cream versus not, right? You get to know what works for you. Okay, finish strong, legs together, arms over your head, tuck your chin to your chest, sit up. Good, so we're just noticing, right? Throughout class, we're just noticing head to knee pose, right leg out, left leg in, two legs make an L, a 90 degree angle, no wider. Inhale your arms over your head, always stretch up first. Exhale, turn to your right, tuck your chin to your chest, round your spine, bring your forehead and knee together. You can bend your right leg as much as you want, touch knee and head together, front side compression, throat choked, eyes open, breathing normal. Good, change, arms up, left leg out, right leg all the way in, stretch up, turn to your left, Tuck your chin to your chest, go down. Interlock your 10 fingers up to the webbing under the ball of your foot. This is a great way to practice the grip for standing head to knee without having to balance. Notice if your knee is tilting to the left side of the room, left toes tilting out, heel tilting in. Bring your knee up, so knee facing towards the ceiling, big toe flexing back towards the ceiling, elbows down to the floor. Good, change, arms up, both legs out in front of you. If you're skipping, sit up, stay here. Otherwise, lay down on your back, let your spine realign and sit up. Hashimotanasana stretching, bend your knees, hook onto your big toes with your peace sign finger, it's middle and index fingers, thumbs on top. Walk your hips back, right, left, right, left, 10 to 15 times. Knees can stay bent. Try to push your chest forward. If your legs are straight, stick your butt out a little bit. Try to lock your legs. Now notice if the knees are coming apart and the toes are turning in, spiral inner thighs down, flex little toes back so the soles of your feet are flat and then start to pull. Coming down with a flat back, straight spine, stomach to thighs, pull, beautiful, chest to knees, stretch, one day toes and head touch. Good stuff. Change, come up, turn around, Savasana. So you'll notice how our hips react to our spine, right? In all three of those postures, that, or the head to knee and the stretching, like when we're tight, the hips will try to open up, the knees will try to come like out to the side. You always want to keep the hips in line. Second set, legs together, arms over your head, tuck your chin to your chest, sit up. Let's try it, right leg out, left leg all the way in, stretch up, turn to your right, tuck your chin to your chest and go down. So again, notice if that knee's like coming out to the right, try to get your knee pointing up so the hips stay square. If it's easy to touch your forehead and knee together with a bent leg, press your heel forward. If your leg is straight, lock your leg, bend your elbows down, left elbow down, left shoulder down, left knee down, roll into the left. Good, change, arms up, left leg out, right leg all the way in, stretch up, turn to your left, tuck your chin to your chest, put your forehead on your knee. So feel what it feels like to have your forehead on your knee. Big toe pointing up to the ceiling, heel pointing down to the floor, maybe heel off the floor, stomach in, right elbow down, right shoulder down, roll into the right. Good, change, arms up, both legs out in front of you, option to stay here or lie down on your back and sit up. Good, second set stretching, I'll show you from the side, bend your knees, hook onto your big toes with your middle and index fingers, thumbs on top and scoot your butt back. So in this posture, it's different from head to knee. Rather than rounding your spine, try to arch your spine. If your legs are straight, lock your legs and start to come down. So again, when the hamstrings are tight or when the hips or spine are tight, things will start to happen, like the toes turn in, knees come apart, spine rounds. Knees back together, toes back, spine straight. Now go down, stomach to thighs, pull, chest to knees stretch, one day toes and head touch. Good. Change, come up, turn around, Shavasana. Last posture of the day, we just do one set of, it's a spine twist meant to reset your back after all of your hard work. Should feel really good. Legs together, arms over your head, tuck your chin to your chest, sit up. Good. Okay, Ardha Matsandrasana, spine twist. Identify left, identify right, don't mix them up. Bend your left leg on the floor, Touch your right heel to your left knee corner. Right arm behind you, left arm, stretch up. Always stretching up first and over. Grab your left knee with your left hand, hand, heel, and knee touch. Keep your right foot on the floor, point your left toes. Inhale, stretch up, stomach in. 
Exhale, look over your right shoulder and twist. You can keep your right hand close behind you for balance. You can also grab your hip, your waistband, one day your inner thigh. Inhale, stretch up, abdomen in. Exhale, look over your right shoulder, twist, twist, twist. Good, change, unwind, stop at your legs. I'll show you from the side. Pinch your right leg on the floor, touch your left heel to your right knee corner, left arm behind you, right arm up and over. I made this joke the other day, but my tombstone will say, I'll show you from the side. Left arm close behind you, inhale, stretch up. Exhale, look over your left shoulder and twist. You can keep your hand behind you or do the half bind, keep spine straight, chest up, rib cage open. Inhale, stretch up, abdomen in. Exhale, look over your left shoulder, twist, twist, twist. Good, change, unwind, turn around, Savasana. We started class with the breathing exercise, exhaling through the mouth. We finish class full circle of the breathing exercise, exhaling through the mouth, couple back deep breathing, skull shining breathing. Legs together, arms over your head, tuck your chin to your chest, sit up, push all of the air out. <laughs> Good, okay. Come to the middle of your mat and towel, sit well, knees, feet together, hips on your heels, hands on your thighs. If it hurts to sit on your feet, don't do it. Sit on your butt, crisscross applesauce. Every once in a while, try to sit on your feet. Um, active arms, so strong arms to support your spine. All you do is exhale. As you exhale through your mouth, snap your belly in. The inhale happens on its own. Lick your lips, swallow a couple times, concentrate, meditate. Don't forget to have fun. Here we go. Five, four, three, two, one. Lift your lips, fall a couple times. Sit up nice and tall. Here we go. Five, four, three, two, one. Good for you. Honor yourself. Give yourself a hug. High five. Pat on the back. Turn around. I love that final breathing exercise because all of all of your animals always come out to play like what are what is my human doing okay close your eyes open your arms and legs Savasana maybe just like you asked yourself at the beginning of class how is your heart I'm often reminded of a part of the musical Rent in which um, people are at a support group for people with AIDS. And there's a part of this song that goes, how do you feel today? And the person goes, best I've felt all year. And the guy says, well, then why choose fear? And he says, I'm a New Yorker, fear's my life. And I, I think about that often because like, even in the midst of like stressful times, Sometimes if you really ask yourself, like, how am I? Sometimes the answer is really crappy, but sometimes the answer is like surprisingly light, surprisingly buoyant, right? So I think yoga offers us this wonderful opportunity to like acknowledge where we are and that's not always like happy-go-lucky, but it also offers us an opportunity um, to not choose fear, right? And to choose to be hopeful and loving and keep our heart space open. Take a slow inhale to your nose. So exhale through your nose. Picture yourself in perfect, radiant health. 